is Armageddon News. On the agenda today, we discuss the mark of the beast, its connection to worship and trade, what the consequences are of taking it, and its startling links to Islamic scripture. Good day. A former Islamic terrorist, named Walid Shubat, who has become a born-again Christian, has discovered a connection, between the name of Allah, and the 666. He explains that the Greek letters, XES, which John wrote in Greek, are actually the Arabic phrase, Bishmillah, which means, in the name of Allah. He says that what John saw, were actually Arabic letters, which John could not read, but which bore a resemblance to the Greek alphabet in which John wrote. It would have been pointless to write symbols of another language, which could not be read by the Greek readers of Revelation. So it is very possible that the Arabic Bishmillah, is indeed what John saw, and recorded in Greek letters. The first symbol of 666, are the Muslim crossed swords, the X character, a symbol of Islam and Jihad, which are often used by Muslims, on flags and military symbols. Notice the handles on the swords. The middle, E, symbol, is an Islamic symbol called Bishmillah, Arabic for Allah. Or, in the name of Allah. When you turn the Bishmillah on its side and place it in a mirror, it forms the same middle Greek character, as written by John. Notice the line drawn, above Allah. And the hook, on its end. The line, it is part of the word Allah, it is not an underline. Notice the same hook in the line drawn by John. It matches the line, in the name Allah exactly. The third character is the Greek character stigma, which means mark, or badge of servitude. The Greek XES or 666, has been noted not just in the Bishmillah, but also in the Shahada, which is the Islamic confession of faith, which is what the Quran states, will be written on the badge of servitude, on the Day of Judgment. The XES, has also been noted, on an Islamic Chechen flag, which bears the crossed swords and the name Allahu Akbar, meaning God is greater. This flag bears a striking resemblance to the Greek XES, as written by John. Even bearing the line, above the letter E, in the name, Allah. It has also been noted, that in the Arabic calligraphy form, the name, Allahu Akbar, contains three sixes which can be clearly seen. During Salah, Muslim prayers, the name, Allahu Akbar, is repeated constantly and is recited, exactly 111 times per day, for six days, which equals 666. And during Friday prayer, Muslims recite, Allahu Akbar, only 98 times. Therefore a direct connection, between the name, Allahu Akbar and the number 666 can be perceived. The Bible speaks about taking the mark, on the forehead or right hand. It has been pointed out, that Muslims are already wearing marks, on their foreheads and arms, as Islamic banners of protest, and jihad. So Muslims have already been conditioned to take the mark, as a symbol of their belief. The Greek word sharagma, used for mark, means a stamp, an imprinted mark. So a follower of the Antichrist, will have a stamp on their body, or on some form of badge, to be placed on the forehead or arm. In John's time, the use for sharagma was reserved for slaves in what was called, a badge of servitude. So, it's a badge, that declares slavery, and ownership by the master. And his followers, use it to demonstrate allegiance to this master. This would fit Islam, since according to Islamic theology, Muslims are slaves of Allah. And Islam is the religion of, submission. Take a look at the many different Islamic headbands, which have been created, for a Muslim to wear, as a sign of their faith. There is a very interesting headband, which actually has the XES written on it, with crossed swords. They call it, the Shahid, headband. Amazingly the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, tells us exactly what the name Allah, really means. The name Allah is actually the Hebrew word, for curse, or oath. Strong's Dictionary says it's, an imprecation, curse, cursing, execration, oath, or swearing. So, Allah is actually the word, 
for a curse. And amazingly, it was the serpent in the Garden of Eden, which became the first being, to be cursed by God. Therefore a connection, between the serpent, being cursed, and Allah, which means, a curse, is very surprising. It would appear that by wearing the name Allah, you are in point of fact, wearing a curse. Which would explain why the name Allah, is in the shape, of the cursed serpent. In the Bible, Revelation 12 9 describes Satan as the great dragon, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan. Then the book of Revelation, goes on to speak about the great dragon Satan, giving his throne to the Antichrist. And a group of people, worshipping the dragon, which has given them this Antichrist king. Revelation 13 4. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who, is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? What people would knowingly worship the dragon Satan? The answer is none. These people have no idea they are actually worshipping Satan. But they are shouting his praises in the streets, because the dragon has given them, a king. What type of people, would actually stand in the street, praising their god for giving them an empire and strong king, that no one dare make war against? How do Muslims praise their god? By shouting Allahu Akbar. This is how they worship the dragon Satan. By shouting Allah is great. The Bible doesn't just call Satan the dragon but, the great, dragon. The great, is actually part of the name of Allah. But in the Bible the great, is part of the name for the dragon. Even the whore of Babylon who rides the beast, has a name written on her head. Mystery Babylon, the great. A city that thinks she is great. The word for great is Akbar, and is indeed a boast, which only the Muslims cry out. The other meaning of the Hebrew word Allah, or curse, is an oath. A binding oath. As we'll discover later, a binding oath, is exactly what Allah requires, from his followers. In the Garden of Eden, while speaking to the serpent, God gave us a very profound prophecy, concerning the end days. Genesis 3.15 says, I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours, will always be enemies. Her offspring, will crush your head. And you will bite her offspring's heel. God spoke of hatred between, the serpent Satan, and the woman Israel. Then he speaks about two seeds. The seed of the woman, and the seed of the serpent. The seed of the woman, whose heel was bitten, by the serpent, was the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, which was crucified having nails driven through his feet, which left him with two puncture marks as if he had been bitten by a serpent. But who is the seed of the serpent? I believe it is speaking, about the promised son of the serpent, a false messiah. To find out, who these two opposing races are, we don't have to look very far. We know that the woman is Israel, which gave birth to the messiah. We only need now look, for the race of people, which according to this verse hates Israel, like the serpent does. This race is none other than the Muslims. But wait, God, is describing that a seed, will come from the serpents. This seed of the serpent, is describing the Antichrist, which will come from the people, which Satan has chosen, because of their hatred for Israel. Just like Jesus, was the promised seed of the woman, Israel. So Islam is also waiting, for Allah, to send them a promised Messiah. Called the Imam Mahdi, Islam's twelfth Imam. This Mahdi, is the seed of the serpent, Allah. And this Mahdi, will become the Caliph and King of Islam. Uniting all, the divided Islamic lands, which were given a deadly head wound, when the Caliph of the Ottoman Empire, was dissolved. Causing their empire to break up. This Caliph will unite the Islamic lands, which the Bible describes, as the head wound being healed. When the dragon gives him his power and seat, and great authority and all the Islamic world will wander after the beast. He will also be the one, to wage war against Jesus Christ, in the battle of Armageddon. A startling connection, between the mark of the beast and Islamic belief about the last days, has been discovered. Amazingly, and in keeping perfectly with what the Bible predicted so long ago, regarding the beast and his mark, the badge of servitude, 
is in fact an Islamic commandment from Muhammad himself, who said, Allah will save a man from my nation, above all creation on judgment day. In front of him will be laid ninety-nine registers, for his sins. Every register, is as long as the eye can see. Then he is asked, do you deny any of these? Then he says, no, O Lord. Then he is asked, do you have any excuse? He responds, no Lord, then he is told, you have but one good deed, and there will be no condemnation for you today. A badge is brought forth. Scrolled across it are the words, no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Then he asked to bring forth his deeds. He asks, O Lord, what is this badge that is with these registers? He is told, you will receive no condemnation. The deeds are put on one hand, and the badge in the other. Then the registers will float, and the badge will outweigh the registers. Tamathi 2639. The badge of servitude is the Islamic counterfeit of Jesus Christ, which Muhammad claimed would pardon the wearer of all their sins on Judgment Day. To sum it up, the name of the beast, along with variations of the name of Allah, will be made compulsory as a sign of submission on the right arm or forehead. Islam is submission and allegiance to a foreign god, the badge being spoken of, by Muhammad is the Shahada, which is blasphemous, and is worn by Muslims as a badge on the foreheads. The Shahada is the Muslim declaration of belief. It states, there is no god but Allah, and Muhammad, is the messenger of Allah. If this Shahada is part of the mark of the beast, those who take it, will be forever denying Jesus, as the son of God, and sealing themselves to Islam which is the only religion, which actually denies Jesus, was the Son of God, in its scriptures. The Bible mentions this as one of the prerequisites of the Antichrist and his followers. That he will deny Jesus as the Son of God. 1 John 2.22 says, Who is the liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Denying that Jesus is the Son of Father God, is a Muslim belief. They state it is blasphemous, that God, could have had, a son. So wearing any mark, or badge of Islam, would be to officially deny Jesus Christ, the only hope of salvation. These things meet the biblical requirements for the mark of the beast. Even the part of the Bible that predicted the beast will mark the foreheads is in the Quran and the Hadith. Al-Ad, literally the beast of the earth, is an Islamic version of the account of the beast of the earth in Revelation 13:11, But unlike the Bible, in which the beast is evil, the Quran, gives him a holy mission to revive Islam, and mark the foreheads, of all true Muslim believers. According to Islamic tradition, the beast emerges in the last days. The Quran states, and when the word is fulfilled concerning them, we shall bring forth, a beast of the earth to speak unto them. Because mankind had not faith in our revelations, Quran 2782. The Prophet of Islam declared, The first signs that will come is the rising of the sun, from the place of his setting, and emergence of the beast, upon the people. Whichever of these two occurs before the other, then the other is right behind it. Why do Muslims, mark their foreheads with badges of submission to Allah? It comes from their belief, that the end days are near. Their Quran states, the task of the beast, will be to distinguish the believers from the non-believers. With Prophet Moses' staff, it the beast, will draw a line, on the forehead of every Muslim believer. Whereby his face, will become bright and illuminous, and with a ring of Solomon. It will seal the nose of every non-believer. Whereby his whole face will become black. Thus there will be complete distinction, between the Muslim, and non-Muslim. So that if many parties sit at a dinner table, the Muslim and non-Muslim will be distinguished. Please see part 2, which links the worship of the beast, to the Islamic Pledge of Allegiance.